kneel down here. We just said our human rep, table drinks on his back. Yeah. The first thing everybody heard was human table and set our drinks on his back. <laughs> Welcome. At least it was his. To Bud Light game night. You know us by now. He's Lance Taylor. He's Jim Dunaway. I'm Ryan Brown. We're at Beeple Brady Stadium, Trace and Hoover. Thank you for joining us tonight. You can come join us here. We're here till 7 o'clock with our friends at Bud Light LT. Yeah, we got great gear, merchandise. Um, we're going to be passing it out. We got the Bud Light girls here, and we've got a pair of tickets. So we're going to be giving away for the big game in Tuscaloosa. That's right. Homecoming. So, yeah, Alabama-Mississippi State is still a top 25 matchup. I said last <laughs> week I really believed that Alabama would win, that Mississippi State would win. We would have a top 10 matchup. Uh, I love it. Uh, you know, poor, poor, poor Alabama fans. We have to sell the game now. Well, it's they've lost a game. Still too. an Alabama. It's still a top 20 matchup, top 25 matchup. No, it's still a good ticket because, you know, it's a night game, which I think Alabama fans are excited about. It's still Mississippi State. It seems like it's going to be a win to get them back on track. You know, I, I think it's a um, I think it's top five game in the country. Uh, we're it's probably going to be round number five, number six, but it's one of the better games in the country on a, on a slate that is less than what it was last week. But it's a huge game because everybody's wanting to see. This is actually falling where Alabama is usually very tired after the start of the season where Tennessee has – fallen in in years past where alabama sort of needs a bye week so it'll be see it'll be interesting to see how they pick themselves up with mississippi state coming to town i think it's a good good spot for miss or for alabama i don't know about you brown i mean they've won the last two ninety to nine i think tennessee got their attention there is zero room for for era now moving forward and uh, i i think alabama walks them off the field yeah i think you'll learn a lot about this team in this game this alabama team do they have that killer instinct to get better after a loss or you know, do they let Tennessee beat them twice, so to speak? I'm with Lance. I kind of think Alabama walks them off the field. Mike Leach has never scored a touchdown against uh, this Alabama team. That's yes, the Mississippi right. State coach. So you guys are saying it's hard to close a 90-9 to gap. You know the last That's time? That's tough. I, yep. I think I'm right here. The last time they scored an offensive touchdown in Bryant-Denny was Dak Prescott backdooring me when I had Alabama minus the points against number one Mississippi State. That is correct. 2014 was that? Yeah. Eight yeah, years that's, ago. that's the last time State scored an offensive touchdown. And it was, it was freezing touchdown. that day. Were you guys there? I was. I was outside working with CBS 42. It was a – was a was it 2014? That's what I think it was, yeah. If I remember right, 2014. It was yeah. 2014, yeah. And it would have to be an even year because 22 is in Tuscaloosa. So, yeah. And then um, it was um, – Late quarterback draw up the middle, delayed quarterback draw up the middle for a garbage touchdown that just covered yeah. backdoor cover meant nothing to. The and, game. and you know where I saw it? This is going to be two reference, two references for him in one day at Dirty's tailgate. You were at Dirty's tailgate, <laughs> yeah, because I was the the bus we were riding out was uh, in that parking lot on the far side of the um, the student center, the uh, student rec center. And I was just going tailgate to tailgate, watching that final drive, and it was just painful. So I saw the final touchdown mm. over there. Yeah, mm. stuff. Mm. And one day, can we do a poll? Maybe in the off season, can we do a poll question on which one is our better hats? I think this is our better hat. Do you? This I is, like the one Lance is wearing. It, I mean, I like the one you're wearing too. I got, I got both of them. I, I like the light blue one like this. Yeah, I really the love you blues. This is not just me saying this because I'm a Rams fan, but I think this and Rams colors would be really cool. I mean, you got to admit th those colors pop. The yellow and blue. Oh, yeah, we did yellow and blue. Yep. Yeah, it's it's they're, those are good colors, especially for the summer. Yeah, we could do one. We could do one. Here's a store idea. We could do one with all of our team's colors. Yeah. Now, my aqua and orange probably is not going to sell a whole lot. It might. You never know. Rockstars. I would love Rockstars Hawaiian blue and silver. Yep. Your pewter and what do you all say? Pewter and orange. I in me. So, yeah. I mean, there's an orange to it. We're pewter orange and whatever the red is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's I think right. it's you a battle got, red. Actually. You've got tricolor. Yeah, yeah. If we did one, uh, let's see. Lunsford's a Titans fan. We kind of have that with a Love You Blue. We've already got the Foresters yeah, right Scott's, here. You're wearing Foresters as a Falcons fan. Yeah, uh, that would actually be pretty cool. We could do them all in our colors there. Yeah. But by the way, I, I don't say this enough, but I even said this to the Fox Six folks this morning at the uh, Biscuit Bake Off, uh, who they were complimenting this hat, and I said, actually, Scott Forrester is the one that uh, designed the hat. This hat right here. I said, technically, the Chicago White Sox did, but we can't say that because we don't pay them anything. But he, this is where we get this hat color. From. Right, right. Hey, uh, it is Bud Light Game Night. If you're watching us on YouTube, please make sure you've uh, subscribed, that you click the thumbs up. You like us there on YouTube. That's very helpful if you click the thumbs up for us. Set alerts so you know when we're live as they drink Stella and Bud Light. We are also on Twitter. Fire off a retweet if you're with us and uh, give us a thumbs up there. 
Like us on Facebook and share it there on Facebook as well. And like us on Twitch. We'll get to your comments here as we do every single Thursday night. Um, and Drake starts by saying, and Jim is drunk. <laughs> That's the first thing they heard. <laughs> we'll put a drink on his back. Oh, I wish that we could. Um, God, uh, this is not going to work real quick. But Okay. I'll show LT, and then we'll see if we can get a reaction from the audience. So we go to this place for lunch. We won't mention their names because they don't sponsor. Is that today? That yep. was today. You know where we went. Yep. So I order that only because I wanted to walk out and steal both of those things, but nobody would steal it with me. We didn't have a purse. Wait, I don't even know what this is. That's a shaker oh, okay. to pour more of the drink in. Let's see if we can. <laughs> Looks great. Look at that. That's me drinking a some kind of drink out of a martini like Maggie. glass. I drink like Maggie would drink. Yeah. yeah. So it, shaker. W- it wasn't a regular margarita? Uh, no, it was um, – it was, they called it a Palo, a Paloma Tini, a Palo Tini or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I don't really know what it was. Grapefruit, Redmond vodka, and uh, some other stuff. How was it? I've had better. Okay. Yep. I'm <laughs> <says that. laughs> I, mean, I ordered wrong. Uh, Drake says he likes the blue hat that Brown didn't sign for me. Did you guys sign a hat that I didn't sign? Uh, it was already at the golf course? Mm, I don't remember. I don't know what Drake means by that. Drake, did we sign it? I, or maybe it was a shirt. I don't know. Did y'all sign a shirt I didn't sign? No, he's probably talking about the blue hat that I was talking about that looks like this. Yeah. I don't know why he says I didn't sign it for me. Uh, Michael says he is wearing the black one right now. It's the best. The best. The, the black, black one? one? Yeah. Mm. I'm not sure. We've got several black ones. I'm not yeah. sure what he's talking about. I've got a black one like this, and I've got the just T and R, the circular logo, and it looks like T and A. Yes, I know. People yeah. have told me that, that it looks like T and A. Michael, hope the baby's doing well. Congratulations yes. again there from all go. of us. Uh, Shannon says four minutes in, there were 26 people watching this. Do you guys regret leaving jocks? <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I love four minutes in. Well, there's only 26 people watching uh, four minutes in. Not at all. If it, if it stays at 26, not yeah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> but tell everyone there we said hello. Yeah, um, I, I remember doing a uh, show on top of the Redmont on a Thursday night. Yeah. And when I started, I think there was five people watching. Yeah. So and we probably got, oh, I don't know, 40, 50 here, you think? I uh, uh my favorite part about that is I don't think I did one Bud Light game night ever over there. <laughs> no, I know we had missed one yet here. <laughs> but we appreciate you doing all those for us, LT, <laughs> when you were there. Uh Lunsford, running master control says we need the Preds colors close to Rams colors, just navy instead of blue. So we could do that. Um Rapid Flash says, I haven't had the chance to tell you, Ryan Brown. Thank you very much for that Michigan State money line. Very, very impressive prediction. So here's what's funny is that game was going on what? Uh, nobody's thanked me for the Tennessee pick. Well, that game, well, I don't think anybody wanted that one to be right. Or not a lot of people well, I know, but if you wanted right. to win money. Uh, here's what's funny is during Tennessee, Alabama, uh, that game is going to the end. And I'm, I am living and dying with every play because I got no money on it. But one thing I love is being right. I think we're all that way, right? Well, I think oh, it yes. is. It's yeah. an instinct. Yeah, it's an instinct. And that game's going to overtime. Like, Michigan State had a kick to win. I don't know. Well, y'all are both in Knoxville. Michigan State's got a kick to win in regulation. Completely bobble the snap. Don't even get the kickoff. Standard Michigan State, right? And I'm thinking, well, overtime, I think I was laying seven and a half or eight, right? You were getting seven. I mean, getting seven and a half or eight. So, I'm thinking overtime, I'm fine. I'm going to win. But I want to win outright because I take pride in that. So I'm living and dying with every overtime play, and I stop and think the entire state is watching Alabama, Tennessee. I'm the one guy watching Michigan State, Wisconsin that cares. Yeah, I was going to bring it game. up. Even if I would have been home in my cave with all my TVs, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have had that one on. <laughs> <I know. laughs> uh, by the way, Troy, South Alabama tonight. That's one to watch at 630, about 30 minutes after we're done. That's on ESPNU. That's a fun game down at that uh, beautiful stadium that I don't know the name of it. Uh, you know, I drove past it not long ago when I dropped my daughter off and I asked her if she was going a couple of days ago and she was like, I don't know yet. She was like, I went Saturday. She was like, I just don't like football. I was like, you need to go. It's a Thursday night game. She was like, it's weird. We're playing on Thursday night. And I said, you're in the Sun Belt. Yeah. Get used to playing on Thursday night. <laughs> the Fun night. Belt, daughter. Yeah. Go so is she game. not going? I don't know. I'm, I'm going to text her here in a second. I'm going to see if she's going. I mean, she lives a mile from the uh, the stadium. That stadium's really it's nice. It's a cool stadium. Man, a sellout tonight. I mean, it's, it's going to be a good look for South Alabama. My uh, my son doesn't love sports uh, either. Um, and I the first UAB home game, he's at UAB. And I'm like, hey, you're going to the game. He's like, what game? But I talked to him the other day. He's got uh, student uh, basketball tickets. 
No, for used, UAB. We used to go to basketball yeah. games a yeah, lot because yeah. I was always busy. In so football he's going to go watch AK in the bunch. So he's going to go watch Andy Can- Kennedy in the bunch. And the it's going to be a like, fun team. Yep. Jelly Walker, uh, Conference USA Player of the Year yep. preseason. So we may be a basketball family since his mom goes to Duke. Uh, that's, right. that's right. Maggie at Duke, Carter yeah. at UAB. So uh, we were talking. Harper at Montevallo, they don't even have football. Yeah, we played yeah, basketball there too. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to Maggie the other night. She goes back up for second semester in January, and she goes up for about 10 days. And I said, should I take vacation and swing by up there one one weekend, like and make a long weekend of it? And she goes, why would you come up? I'll be all the time going to class and stuff. And I said, well, there's a little thing called Cameron Indoor. Yeah, I want to go to a basketball <laughs> yes. game. Yes, yeah, so I'd like to maybe now. do that one time. Um, so I just oh, found oh, out oh, the, the tickets the how we're doing this. Okay, fire away. We got we got tickets tonight. So, oh, let me just do this real quick because I was about to pull this one up. Uh, Mark says, thank you guys for the Pelin, Pelicans tickets last week. They went to good use. We gave away Pelicans tickets uh, for the Pelicans-Hawks game at uh, Mugshots last week. So we're Beefo Brady's. we got tickets this week too, LT. Yeah, Alabama-Mississippi State tickets, homecoming. Uh, what you're going to do is come up. Uh, Christine's over here, our Bud Light girl. All right. And she's got a uh, the QR code. Yep. Uh, Brittany tells me the war code entry. War code, is that right? War code entry. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll transfer <laughs> transfer the tickets. Right. And uh, maybe it was supposed to be word. Uh, yeah. Is it? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm sure she'll know what to do. <laughs> anyway, you, uh, you scan your phone, and you're going to get a swag pack with a chair and the tickets. Why are you looking at me like that? Uh, it's just funny. <laughs> uh, oh, well, yeah, you had well, two drinks. You know, yeah, you know, she, part of it, part of it is. is <laughs> he had a, a martini at lunch. <laughs> Back to the guy who was asking if we were, you know, said we left shots. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things through this whole thing is uh, a lot of the things that we didn't know what we were doing. We'll just read some things, and LT and I mostly, we don't know all the technical words of everything we're doing. Right. So I'll just throw out words, too, thinking, Thinking, oh, it's got to be something. These Forrester knows about this. Lunsford, you know about this, right? I mean, Brownie, is that you know this? Is that a thing? A war code entry? You know, I really don't know, Lance. No, I'm betting it's um, war code. But Lunsford is uh, Lunsford's on the game here, so he's uh, he's he's going to let you know that. I think Lunsford probably takes you. So anyway, your opportunity <laughs> to win a swag bag with a bunch of stuff in it, including a chair. Yeah. Everybody needs a chair. <laughs> Tonight's war and, code and is tickets. 1812. War of 1812. <laughs> <laughs> Did we win that one? <laughs> you got till seven o'clock. So you actually don't have to be here. You just got to come scan your That's phone. That's right. Come scan the phone and they get in touch. I'm sure they're digital tickets, right? Well, how do you scan the phone if you're not here? No, no I mean, you've got to come by. You don't have to stay the entire yeah, time. You don't oh, have to yeah, be yeah, here yeah. at 7 but o'clock. You, you have to come by here. Yeah, you yeah, do yeah, have yeah. to come by here. Beepo Brady's Stadium Trace in Hoover, just off 459. All right. War, um, war code, 18 War code, baby. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. MJ asked uh, on on uh, YouTube, Jim, are there, are there any uh, hot-ass guys there tonight? Well, I need Brittany here, Brittany and Kelly here to, to do it. But the quick scan is I'm going to say. Is that part know. of the uh, next round cocktail hour? No, no, there are none. There are none? Yep. Well, Lance and I don't count. <laughs> HR violation. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you worry about those. Yeah, really. Chris uh, wants to know if your drink at lunch had an umbrella in it. I was there. It had a lime and salt around the rim, maybe sugar around the rim, now that I think back about that. <laughs> I think that was you. Sweet it. <laughs> who was it? Uh, who uh, who got in trouble for calling uh, somebody sweet cakes? Uh, that was Ron, was it Ron Franklin? Ron Franklin. Yeah, yeah. Ron Franklin. Was it sweet Ron cakes or Edwards. sweet tits? No, I think it was sweet cakes. Sweet cakes. I, yes. <laughs> yeah, sweet tits is sticking it up or uh, stepping up just a little yeah, bit. I believe that's going to get anybody in trouble. But it was Ron Franklin, Jeannie Edwards, and it was before cancel culture. You know? Yeah, well, it yeah. was. It was, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. sort of the kickoff of that. Yeah. It was the pregame. Hey, sweet cakes, you let us. You leave the coaches talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet cakes, leave the football talk to us. Yeah. Um, Those men. I did like Ron Franklin, though. Oh, well, Ron oh, Franklin was too. the best. Yeah. And Keith Jackson. Yeah. Because yeah. they crossed over a little bit, right? Yeah, Keith they Jackson did. was still doing it when Ron Franklin started. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. you had the 80s. You yeah. know who's. You that know Saturday who's, night ESPN game was Ron I mean, Franklin. T- yeah, tell me. I mean, uh, Mike Godfrey and Ron Franklin were the A crew when, when Craig. Uh, um, oh my God, dude! Before Kirk Curb Street, oh Craig James, Craig Pony. James was doing Game Day. Yep. Yeah, so Game Day then was uh, Chris Fowler, Craig James, and Lee Corson, yep. right? Yep, that is correct. Boy, back in the day, man. So yeah. we said it seemed so good back then. They the, were just at studio; they didn't travel. The eighties, though. I mean, that was the eighties, and it was a great decade for Auburn. But all my Auburn friends, my fraternity brothers and such, they were big Auburn fans. So I'd be watching those big Auburn Saturday night games, you know, playing number one yep. Tennessee or Tennessee was playing Florida number one State, Auburn, yeah. Florida State. And I'd be like, 
whatever See, happened to Alabama. I know the answer to this. The last college game day was in Knoxville. Yep. Where was the first? First ever? Yeah. Uh, uh, on the road was Ohio State, yeah, right? first one on the road ever was Ohio State. Okay, I, I, think, I think First headgear right. was at um, – Oh, no, no, no. First no. Hager was Ohio State. I think first road game was Florida State Notre Dame. It was, yeah, because they didn't did they it do in, it inside inside the convocation was it, center. Was that weather related, or they were just like, oh, we can't do an outside show? Well, I don't think they thought fans would show up for it. Right, I and think it surprised them. Yeah, Florida State Notre Dame. I believe that was ninety three because people were in the in the lobby yeah. clapping as they'd come back from break. Yeah, oh, we've even got our audience yeah. here that will well, watch wow. this. People watch this show. Yeah. All right, maybe yeah. next week we'll let you have one sign, just one. <laughs> Nobody bring any school flags or anything. That's right. Nobody from Washington State show up. Yep. All right. We are at uh, Beef O'Brady's Stadium Trace in Hoover, just off 459. It is Bud Light game night. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and uh, make sure you subscribe. Set those alerts. If you're watching us on Facebook, uh, go ahead and share us on Facebook there as well. Give us a thumbs up. Retweet us on Twitter and like us there as well. Like us on Twitch. Go ahead and drop your comments in. You can ask us absolutely anything and we will answer it. And as Lance said, and Lunsford thinks barcode is my, maybe what she meant there, Lance. Barcode. It's oh, yeah, barcode. that's it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> barcode. The old war code. How close is the W and the B together? Uh, uh, close enough. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you can you can come by and scan the barcode. You're in for tickets to the game in Tuscaloosa Saturday night. Homecoming for Alabama and Mississippi State. And uh, we'll get those tickets to you if you are the winner. So, everybody come by and scan. Uh, yeah, see, I think what happens, I yep. think Brittany is at heart a uh, – well, I, I know she's an Auburn grad, so I think she puts in War Eagle a lot. Oh, that's probably it. So, like, when Good Dunaway, thinking. when he puts C in, it's either SEC or sex. <laughs> is that true? Yes. yes. I'm sorry. I thought it was going to take a little longer to get these. I'll just hold them, sir. My bad. <laughs> Look at Jimmy Three Beers. Um. All right, here we go. I was saying I have not drank since uh, Knoxville, but – here we go. Michael says, really curious. I drink until Knoxville. <laughs> really curious to see Coach on Hey Coach. See what Nick Saban says tonight. Me By the too. way, uh, media guest tonight. Let me guess. Oh, you, you will not oh, guess You will it. not guess. You will not guess it. We'll uh, give you three guesses. No hints. Media guest tonight. That's right. Is Ken Lass. No, but you're, wow. su you're surprisingly wow. close, actually. Yeah, no, not Ken last. Why wait, did you wait. guess Ken last? You know, I don't know. That is insane because oh, last I... night I had not thought of Ken you last. You dreamed of him. I had not thought of Ken last forever. I used to work with him at NBC 13, and I was walking through the lobby, not lobby, the living room, <laughs> and there's Ken last. <laughs> he's finished his beer. Yeah. And, yep. and uh, this, I told Maggie. This could get good, by the I, way. I told Maggie, I said, you know who I haven't thought about in years? Ken last. And she goes, how old is Ken now? And I said. I don't know. He was old back when I was young, and I'm old now, so he's oh. probably pretty old. Ken's 73. It's probably a good guess. Yeah, Ken looks young, though. Yeah. yeah, always did. Always did. Okay, yeah. so if I'm close. Right, so that's that's one. You're kind of close, though. I mean. I would go Mike Royer. Wow. wow I mean, you're, you're so close. Incredibly close. You really are. I don't think you're going to get it, but you. Uh, I, I don't know why you've started guessing down this path. Yeah, how did you even start here? Yeah. Because it's usually somebody who's doing the game. I like, know. I like know. Kublik did it when the SEC yeah. Network guys were doing it. So, you know, it's Herb Street and Fowler and Holly doing it. So, yeah, but it, you know, Herb Street's doing the NFL game. I didn't. My first guess was Herb Street. Brown's yeah. like, I don't know what he's doing. He's doing the game NFL tonight. game. I mean, I know you don't want to watch it because it's a crap Thursday night game. Oh, Lee Tracy? Are you so glad? James Jer Spann. You mean Jerry Tracy? Is it really James Spann? Yeah, James, James Did Spann. you mean Jerry Tracy when you said Lee Tracy? No. no, no, no. You meant Lee Tracy? James Spann tonight. Um, interesting. I yeah. wonder why they picked, picked I Spann. I don't really know. You know, Saban likes that weather crap. He does. He does. So maybe that's why. Um, all right. Let's see. Josh says, leaving jocks was definitely a great move. Everything was amped up to another level. We get to see the real personalities without having to worry about FCC regulations. All that is true. Well, Josh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It is, uh, I don't know, liberating, fun. Yeah, it's fun. No, it is. I mean, I don't I don't disagree. It's fine. No, it is fun. I like I like not having the restraints. I like us being able to make the decisions, do whatever the crap we want to do. Have hats. Have hats. Uh drink drink a beverage during the show. Like for instance, I think one time uh there were some employees. Um oh, I got ratted out one. All night. right. I wasn't gonna rat Lance out, no. but one time Lance was uh having a beer during a show just like this and another employee went and ratted you out, right? Yep. And I got called in on Monday. This was a Friday night show, and I got called in on Monday. And they asked me if I was drinking. I said, yeah, we we're doing it from a bar. We drink every Friday. Well, you can't do that. FCC regulations. How is and it the, FCC regulations? I don't know. But then I, I found out who had, you know, ratted me out. So I went and I confronted him. 
And he said, it's in the employee handbook. And you're like, I haven't read an employee handbook. you got to be kidding me. They didn't give me a damn employee handbook. Yeah. I was there for how many years? I think they did. I they did you, not. Yeah. I swear to God they it was your email. email. John, I think it's in your email. You answered it. Yeah, <laughs> I guarantee you <laughs> they you, gave Jay. you one. I love how Dunaway was so passionate about that. They did not, I swear. They did not. I never Jim, had one. That you had a handbook when you worked there. I, I yeah. promise you, I never had. Yeah, they emailed it to you. I swear they did, or it was probably on some like employee website you were supposed no, to get you, there and read. You, you had to. I think you signed. It you that have you read to it. sign it. Yeah, you have to go through and sign yeah. it. What year was that, guys? Oh, it was every year we worked there. Yeah, you signed. You at least signed that you had read one. Now, I did sign everything they put in front exactly. of me without reading. Yeah, no, you might not have one, but you signed that you read. Corporate it. America. I was just like, yeah. yes, I will sign that. Yes, I will sign that. Yes, I watched that video. Yes, uh, rep- I will not leave a banana on my desk anymore and make jokes about it. <laughs> The stupid, the videos we'd watch. Hey, here's a cool one. Rapid Flash. Can you guys rank the college football teams in Alabama, please? I think it's interesting considering how good UAB, Troy, and USA are right now. Okay, um, well, Alabama won, clearly. I, I still would go UAB, too. I mean, UAB's losses, tough in, losses in on the Auburn, road. In front of Auburn. In front of South yeah. Alabama. Yeah, I would go I'd go UAB and South Alabama in front of Auburn right now. Okay. Maybe wow. Troy. I don't know. Jeez. Come on. <laughs> Come on. What about Jack State? <laughs> no. Come on. I mean, Come on now. No, Alab- uh, so UAB, Auburn, neutral site right now. UAB went to Liberty, lost by a touchdown. Liberty would beat Auburn this year. Lance. Even with a third-string quarterback. Lance. Come on. Come on, Lance. I, I don't know what Auburn you've been watching. I mean, well, I watched Auburn score. What was it thirty eight this past week? Yeah, but here's the, here's what I'll no, say. Number seven, Ole Miss. The way Ole Miss ran it on them, I would yeah. guess McBride would have a few yards in that well, game. Well, I'm not saying it wouldn't be an entertaining game. Yeah, but I would take. I probably would go Alabama, UAB, Auburn, South Alabama. Okay. Troy. I, I will give you that, but I won't go putting them down. You were debating Troy and Auburn for a second. I was look. So Dylan Hopkins. He's an he's an average quarterback. Let's call it like it is. He is, but he's better than Ashford. I'm not sure he is. Well, he's not as athletic, but he's a better quarterback. Well, I mean, athleticism is part of being a quarterback. I'm the one that said three weeks ago. I think Ashford's going to end up being a good quarterback. And I I'm just talking about you. right now. I agree not, with yeah. you. I hate being in this argument because they're not going to play. But I mean, there's a well, there's, they could if Auburn goes on this massive run to get to six to the bowl yeah. game, <laughs> and UAB doesn't win conference USA. They could yeah. play each other. Yeah. And I'd be here for it. It'd be a fun game. Do you guys think Auburn goes to a bowl game? I do not. I no. do not. I'm not certain Auburn wins another game. I'll tell you, a game I think Auburn's going to win, actually. I think they'll probably win two more. I think they beat Texas A&M in Auburn. God, I hope so. I know I mean, you would love that. Well, I mean, a and M. This will. I don't know if you guys realize this. So, Saturday night in Columbia, South Carolina's on a three-game winning streak. a and on a two-game losing streak. If a and loses, this will be the first three-game losing streak under Jimbo Fisher. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Very losable game for them. Yeah. They're I mean, only they're four like and a half point Yeah, favorite. four and a half, yeah. Somebody in the chat's already done this because we have the smartest audience that followed us where we left from to come yep. here. UAB plays Western Kentucky this weekend on the road. Western Kentucky plays at Auburn later on. We can get a pretty good gauge right there. Yeah, I hate doing it that way, but you're right. That's better than nothing. It's as close as we're going to get to them playing no, you're each right. other this year. I was going to so, say. So which one do you think ends up being closer? Well, I was going to give Auburn the win over Western Kentucky was the other win. I just don't think Western Kentucky – it's a tough game for Auburn. It falls right before the Iron Bowl. They'll probably be pretty beat down by them, but they're not going to – I don't think they'll underestimate Western Kentucky. I, I, I actually think UAB wins tomorrow night, and I think Auburn probably beats Western Kentucky, and I think it's a one-possession game on both. Wow, so possession. pretty even, pretty yeah. even. Yeah. But but the difference here is UAB and Western Kentucky right now are still playing for something. At that point, Auburn really could be tapped out. Yeah, and Western Kentucky would be playing for an SEC pelt to hang on their wall. We yeah. got an SEC team. Yeah. Um. Let's see, Jim. I enjoyed the cocktail hour, according to Michael. Oh, thank oh, you. I did too. If yeah. you haven't watched the cocktail hour, it's available uh, on our YouTube channel. Now it's a one-off. I was there one time. Dunaway is the guest bartender with. Uh, so I shot my shots. <laughs> you did. Brittany Wagner and Kelly Hunter, and they talk about um, well, I mean, they, a lot of personal they, things. I mean, bottom line is some of you, we have a very, we skewed a very young audience. Some of you are single. And we also have some guys middle age who are divorced. I mean, it's a 50-50 proposition, this marriage thing. So if you are single or newly single, there is some advice in there that will help you as you get back into the game or stay in the game. Okay. Like, what kind of bar would you meet someone like Brittany Wagner? Yeah. 
Um, pushing what, pushing like, guys up against the wall and kissing yeah, them, like right? if uh, you ever wanted to get pushed against the wall by a girl coming out of the bathroom. What you need to do to what make that happen. they thinking about that. I would suggest coming up to Beef O'Brady's tonight. Let Dunaway push you against the wall. Scanning our war code. Excuse me, barcode. <laughs> war code. War yeah. code. Your opportunity code. to win a huge Bud Light prize pack and tickets this weekend, Tuscaloosa, Mississippi State, Alabama. will transfer everything to you. It's that simple. Come have a drink with us. Two ninety nine Bud Lights right now. You can grab a Stella with me. I'll buy you a Stella if you come tap me on the shoulder right now. If you get tapped on the shoulder right now, you're going to buy a Stella for yeah. somebody. Okay. Yeah. That's all you got to do. All right. Um, let's go to Riley. He also says, great job on cocktails done away. Really enjoyed it. You get some good pub here, Jim. People Thank like you. it. Henry says, when did the Washington State flag start traveling to every game day? They're doing a commercial on it right now. I don't know what year that was. Hey, turn your TV up, Henry. I'm kidding. Uh, no, <laughs> the, the, the guy used to play in the band. I haven't. I'm right there with you, Henry. I, I didn't hear the year. Yeah. Um, but he talks about they decided to take the flag and they've continued the tradition. And is Reese not riding out of the motorcycle? He, is. he yeah, absolutely yeah. is. Yeah. I've seen the commercial, but I've paid no attention to it. It was a cool tradition, though. It is. I'm glad it's there every time. Listen, I don't watch game day for three hours anymore. I don't know that a ton of people do. But I turn it on to start the show and I, I watch too. it at the end and then. You know, we're on 9 to 10 right in the middle of it every Saturday if you guys would like to join us. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people do what I do. I watch maybe the first half hour or so, and then I come back for the picks. That's what I do. That's what I do as well. Um, now, if occasionally I'm walking by and whoever's trying to be the new Rinaldi is trying, trying to, to make, make me cry, cry yeah. I watch those stories too. I forget which one it was. It was the it was the Breesy show, show story of uh, Breesy's daughter at Clemson. Not daughter. Sister. Uh, sister at yeah. Clemson. And how she was such a good athlete too. And then she all of a sudden she – was had brain cancer and passed away. It was a heartbreak. That is tough. Yeah, Didn't see, that. I was in tears. Wow. Hey, by the way, what happened to the Mississippi State kid that passed away? I, I really don't know. I, I don't mean, either. If I don't, you, if I don't you, have any details. Yeah, if you read it, you can make one assumption. I don't know if that's the accurate assumption, but the way I read it, I kind of made an assumption. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't want to say it because that's, that's a sensitive situation. Yeah, me too. I got a few DMs today. Um, you know, why didn't we ask Matt Wyatt about it? And I didn't. I didn't. didn't well, really know the details, so I didn't want to. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. It was. To be honest with you, I thought about bringing it up to Matt, but um, the assumption I made when I read it, I didn't want to put Matt in a tough spot. I'm yep. just going to leave it at that. Uh, Brooks says, so yesterday you were talking about two landmines you can't talk about, so I'm asking, what's the two landmines not to be spoken about? Well, we we're, can't we're, talk about it. Yeah. We can't. We're going to have to figure out how to address that at some point. It's got to be one of the chapters in Can we finally do it, you think, In there? the documentary. Yeah, in the 13-part yeah. documentary. Yeah. I think one of them people have kind of figured out in the past that one kind of came up one day the other one i don't think there's any way anybody would put two and two together we would have to tell people about that one one is just something i said and the other one was a a legit steak bet but yeah that's true yeah we'll make that one to see that's why i want to do it in 13 parts in the off season right again because one of them could be you know focused on those type of things right um samuel says what is the last theater movie premiere you went to oh wow mine was uh top gun maverick this year you went the first night oh is that what he means yeah Yeah. oh i don't think i've ever been to a movie the first night i thought he meant yeah i guess that's what that means right my bad oh i can't remember which one i don't think i've ever been to a Oh, i've been to a bunch i'm trying to think the last one though i'll tell you early in our dating and early in our marriage life before we got married we would go see everything in the theaters and we'd go to movies twice a week at least once a week usually on sundays um, just Sunday afternoons. Yeah. If it wasn't NFL Sunday, but we'd go at least once a week to a movie, Maggie and I. And then we have kids, it changes a little bit. We still went to a lot of movies. And she had a bad habit of leaving her phone or a jacket or a purse. Really? Uh, all the time. All the time. At the theater. At the yeah. theater. I'm trying to think. Uh, normally, I've got to be really excited about a movie. I don't think I've ever been to a premiere because I'm the guy that wants the crowd to die down a little bit. I don't want to go fight a crowd and have to get there early enough to get a good seat. Because I don't know about you guys. I am I am as high a row as possible, as close to the middle as possible. That's oh, where I like wow. to sit. I like yeah. last row. See, I'm a uh, mid-high first seat on the aisle. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Because I've got to go to the bathroom at least one time during the movie. Maggie yeah. likes to be in the middle. Because she says that's where the best sound and the best video. That, that's is. why I said high and uh, yeah, 
Yeah. And that's, I like to be in the very back because, you know, people can bug me in front of me, in front of me, but I hate people bugging. That's right. Bugging me. I don't want anybody to sit behind. Yeah. I call those the mob seats. That's right. I'm surprised. Everybody's in front of me. That's right. You don't sit above the, uh, the walkway so he could jump out if there's a gunman. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I knew what you yeah. were thinking. <laughs> Yeah, but you would wait for the guy in his trench coat to come in, make that right, and once he does, you leap down. I appreciate you thinking I'm that athletic. <laughs> <laughs> you think you'd roll your ankle and then get shot? Yeah. <laughs> Drag got away. Huh? It shoot me first. <laughs> Stop it shoots you midair. Stop the screaming. <laughs> it's like a horse. You horse. think that leg hurts? How about this one? Boom. <laughs> Uh, it is Bud Light game night. We are live at Beepo Grace, Grace, just on 459. Uh, you can come out and see us. We'll be here until 7 o'clock. We're live with you here on video until 6 o'clock. Come by and scan the barcode. There's a ton of people here, but you got a chance of winning. Scan that barcode for Bama Mississippi State tickets. We're going to pick somebody from everybody that scans the barcode uh, at 7 o'clock tonight. If you're watching us on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and set alerts so you always know when you're, we're live. If you're watching us on Facebook, make sure you have shared us. Give us a thumbs up there as well. Like us on Twitter and retweet us, please. And also like us on. Yeah, right now you can get two ninety nine. dollars so Brady's, um, obviously, as you just said, come by. It's the barcode. All you got to do is swipe your phone. We're going to send you the tickets. Uh, we can. Uh... says taking the electronic off the metal chair helps. Why would that make a difference? Just because it works as a, a ground. Yeah. Okay. I did it. Don't tell me. Are you serious? No, I'm just But did it work? You. Yeah. It's, it's okay. metal on metal. All right. Man. All right, everybody. Dunaway was accurate on what the issue was. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Wow. Dunaway, man, that is incredible. That's the I've, I've Montevala this. education. <laughs> yeah. I've been doing this a long time, man. All right. Uh, how long was it buzzy, though? Somebody in the chat room, give us a number and how long. We're going to do this like soccer time. Oh, no, I can tell you how long. I can go back and look when everybody started saying it. In the, I was behind in the uh, yeah, in the so comments. We'll give you bonus time for what we lost in the static there. Well, Thank crap, you. crap, and I lost all the comments, too. That's okay. That sucks. It's no, it's okay. not. I, I had all the good comments, man. Give us the comments again. that happens. Give us the comments again. What's up, little T? Oh, man. I don't know why that happens, though. I don't know why we lose the comments. Well, we got to get new comments, right? That's right, new comments. Meanwhile, though, now that they can hear us, if you come by here, and this is Beefo Brady's in Hoover. The Grove. Yep. 
the Grove and Hoover, come by here and scan the war code. Yeah. War damn code tonight. Yep. Scan the war code, and somebody's going to win not only the prize pack from our friends at Bud Light, but also two tickets to homecoming this weekend in Tuscaloosa, Mississippi State, Alabama. If Mississippi State beats Alabama, DEFCON 1. By the way, of all our Bud Light game night setups so far, this has been the best looking one. Oh, thank you, Jim. You're thank welcome. you for fixing the audio issues. And <laughs> thank you for uh, complimenting the setup. I don't want to. I, I'm not a hero, right? I right. just, I just pointed just out that the metal could be a yep, problem. Yep. Um, let's see. Riley says it was about two hours, so we got to do an extra two <laughs> hours tonight. Not Riley, thank run. you. Sorry, thank you. I'll stay here with you as long yeah. as the Bud Light's cold. Three to five minutes is what everybody's saying. Lunsford says probably four to five minutes. So we're going to give you four to five minutes extra. We are so, so, so sorry. We'll go until five after six. Yep. Um, Brooks wants to know what it's everyone's favorite movie. Let's see if we can predict everybody's favorite movie up here like not like what do y'all think is mine okay i'm gonna go saving private ride correct yes shawshank is in the conversation nope. good fellas good fellas good fellas okay me um serendipity i mean that's in there but the, the, notebook. the notebook that's in there love actually is love actually, actually number one yeah, yeah. God, we've got good movies. You got a shitty movie, <laughs> but I gave you a trilogy. I, I don't a know trilogy. That, of you shit. Did. I don't know that I've seen Love Actually. You've, You've seen never that? seen it. Uh, John Cusack and who else? John Cusack on it. Oh wow! You like a movie? Your favorite movie does have John Cusack. Yeah. In it. Hugh Grant, right? Uh, Hugh Grant is in it. It's a yep. it's an ensemble cast, right? Yeah, with a lot of a uh, lot of different story. Have you seen? You've seen it. Uh, I don't. I don't know if I've seen it. I, I'll admit I've seen The Notebook. So hokey. Um, I've seen. I haven't seen Serendipity. Oh, wow. I think I've seen Love, actually. Serendipity, I, uh, Notebook's third on that list. I got forced to watch The Holiday last year during Christmas. The Holiday's not That's bad. Hugh Grant, uh, right? Yeah. It was not. Yeah, well, I think I've seen no, that No, The uh, Holiday has uh, Jack Black. Yeah, Jack Black, Jude Law, um, Cameron Kate, Diaz. Kate Winslet and Cameron Diaz. Yeah. It's what's a love a story. What's a completely random movie that you actually like? Me? I mean completely random. Yeah. Uh, oh, I like a bunch of stuff, Brown, that are some crappy movies. Um, here's some, there was this movie in the nineties that was about, it seems like, uh, it had the, the girl that stole everything. This is my favorite part of when I'm describing movies. I never, singles. Yep. Was it singles? I think it was singles. <laughs> it was like, uh, the, the guy was in charge of snow plowing the roads and no, she was the boyfriend, beautiful girls, beautiful girls. And, and she was not even in it. Uma Thurma was in it. Rosie O'Donnell was in it. Matt Damon whoa, whoa, was whoa, in whoa. it. Yeah, Rosie yeah. O'Donnell was in a movie called Beautiful Girls. Yeah, I mean, I think that was the irony of it. Oh, okay. It's but a it comedy was, then. But it was not. But Lauren Holly was in it. Oh, um, I mean, like Mira Sor hey, Sorvino. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, Lauren, it's a good soundtrack, I, right? I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lauren Holly, Dumb and Dumber. Oh. Hey, Lauren Holly, oh. Beautiful Girls. Yeah. Then that's, you know what, Dunaway, that's one of my, off. if I, like I did a top 50 movies, it's probably top 50. But that and really what did like you say it. before that one? That one? Um, singles. Singles. Cam I Cameron like Crowe one. wrote that one. I Matt like Dillon's that one. also in that. Yeah, I like that one as I've well. I've never seen singles, but. Uh, random movies for me, uh, State of Grace. I've told people before, if you like the gangster genre, it's an Irish gangster with uh, Ooh, Sean Penn. I've never seen it. I do like the gangster genre. Yeah, it's Irish mobs. Uh, Irish mob in Hell's Kitchen. Gary, of, Gary Oldman's in it. State of Grace, huh? Yeah, State of Grace. Uh, who else is in it? Ed Harris is in it. Oh, wow. I like yeah. that cast. Yeah, it's yeah. good. State of Grace. I got to go see that one. Um, this movie, I can promise you none of you have seen, not one of you have seen, is called Purgatory. Somebody's got like a 1980s phone ringing in the background. Is David here? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, so it's called Purgatory, and it is um, – I just liked the premise of it. I'm not going to swear that it was very well acted. In fact, the biggest name that was in it um, – oh, gosh, I'm, it was Eric Roberts, Julia Roberts' brother, is yep. in it. And the sheriff is played by – I cannot say his name. Brian I, Bosworth? No. I like the Bos as a sheriff, though. Jackie Gleason. No. <laughs> <laughs> Julia? If I said his name, Lance, he's a bit actor. You've seen him before. I want to say Sam Shepard. I apologize for Brown killing your extra five minutes trying to think of this actor. But it's not Sam Shepard. Oh, God, Donna. Well, you do this all the time. Okay, I saw a movie. It had three people in it. Okay, so Purgatory. <laughs> so, all right. What, yeah. what else was the bit actor in? What does he look this like? This is going to be tough. Okay. Here, I'm just going to pull it up. It's going to drive me crazy if I don't pull it up. All right, so the premise of the movie is you do something um, like – so you walk up on a guy beating up a woman and you kill him. 
you go to this western town called Purgatory, and if you do enough good deeds, you get out of Purgatory, right? But didn't I do a good deed by shooting that guy? Not enough. Not enough. I mean, you, you know, I mean, it's it's a flaw. I mean, like there's this is just it's just a movie, obviously. But you're trying to prove to God that you don't deserve to go to hell. Now, you know, m- religiously, I don't believe that. I'm just saying that's the premise of the movie. Okay. So I. But so I, you have to live there, and you have to live a peaceful life. All right. So well, this gang comes to town. And they're trying to rape and pillage the town. And then they've got to decide. Is that purgatory? The te- the gang comes to purgatory. Well, then so at this point, I've got to kill that gang too. That's what they're trying to decide. Do we kill the gang and risk going to hell? Yes. Well, that's yeah. you'll have to see that. You'll have to watch the movie to see I'll, if they did it. I'll, I'll bring full circle on our week together, Brown. You stay in the truck. I'll take care of it. Is it, is, it, is, it, is, it is it Chris Cooper? Sam Shepard. No, yeah. it is Sam Shepard. It's a little country music Lester. reference for you guys. A little hearty reference there. Lester. Sam Shepard's got a little... A little Sam Pittman in it. A little bit, yeah. Yep. This was older, our younger, skinnier Sam Shepard. Um, all right, let's go back to uh, the questions there. So those are random movies we like, too. i got to dig back through here with the questions. Bifo, she says, if everyone on the next round payroll formed a kickball team, who would be likely the MVP and who would be the biggest liability? Uh, we have 10 people. Yep. Taylor Korn is our 10th person. She played soccer, though. So oh, you, that's true. So you don't think she that. can kick. She's had a couple of injjuries. Yeah, but Taylor was a good soccer player. No, that's what I'm saying. She yeah, can kick. Yeah, she would injuries. not be a liability. I don't think so. Um, I mean, this is easy. You think Dunaway's going to be the liability? I don't know about Dunaway being the liability. Yeah, but Lance is going to say he'd be the best. Well, no, me and Reed. No, you're more athletic than Reed. No, nah, I mean Reed's, Reed's pretty athletic. Sneaky athletic. Yeah, and he's nine years younger. Yeah, but. He's also a little more out of shape. I don't think Ro- I don't think Rockstar would take it very seriously. So, no. um, our liability. I mean, you hate to say Kelsey. No, Kelsey was a good athlete in high school. I didn't know that. Yep. What'd she do? What'd she play? Plus softball, I think. Did she really? Mm-hmm. And that's like kickball. Yeah. Because you have bases. Yeah. I think you. I think you've misjudged. Yeah. See, I am. I am look, trending down towards the liability status. Yeah. You, I think it might be Rocky just because you wouldn't care. Did you notice that Jimmy politically correct singled out both females immediately? No, no. <laughs> just I assumed I, that they I, wouldn't be good. I went Taylor first to eliminate her from being a liability because she was a soccer player. We have two female employees, yeah. and that's the first two names you said. Twenty percent of our work staff. Twenty percent of our workforce is female. Um. Hunter says, do you get annoyed by Dusty Baker wearing exam gloves in the dugout when he's like he's going to perform a medical exam? I don't. I just feel like he's ready for anybody bleeding out. I mean, it's the, it is kind of weird, though. I mean, you have to think about it. If somebody starts bleeding out, it's an emergency. He's old. It would take a long time to put the gloves on. He's ready all the time. <laughs> I still can't believe Dusty has managed so many different teams. It's wild, isn't yeah. it? And never won a world championship, has he? But And this is going to sound bad. But Buster with us earlier today, go watch the Buster only interview. He said everybody in baseball probably is pulling for Dusty. He's very well liked. He seems more alert this playoff than the last. Like there's been a couple of times he seemed like he hasn't really been engaged in the game. Well, the Braves. Like, uh, to, like Tony La Russa this year. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Tony La Russa, what a, a train wreck that was. Yeah. But uh, he seems more engaged in what's going on now, almost like he's making more of the calls or something. Right. Speaking of a money grab, ticket to paradise. Uh Clooney and uh, Julia Roberts. They're, yeah, that, boy, that's that looks, right now. That looks promo. awful. That just looks like a money grab. How is Clooney? How are Clooney and Julia Roberts doing that bad a movie this late in their career? Oh, I mean, those, they've got tons of money. Money grab. Oh, yeah. but you don't think Julia Roberts and George Clooney have a ton of cash? I, I am shocked that he's saying this. When I saw the trailer, I thought you would love that movie. <laughs> oh, even I can recognize a money grab. <laughs> well, you know, so I, I I actually showed the kids the other night they'd never seen Ocean's Eleven, so we watched. I like it. Ocean's, Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's Eleven's it's good. good. Yeah. Now, it's so unbelievable when you really watch it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it's very entertaining, and it's very detailed on, you know, you got to give them credit how they put together this heist. But Julia Roberts and George Clooney have really good chemistry. So maybe it's a good movie. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm the liability on the, soft, on the uh, kickball team. Well, I didn't want to say it. But. I really don't think so, Brown. You're not a great catch. You don't catch things well. It's, I mean, it's, it's a big ball. Um, Brooks says saving private Ryan and Goodfellas are on the Mount Rushmore of greatest movies. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. I wouldn't pr- put uh private Ryan on mine. I love it. It's a really, really good movie, but yeah. I wouldn't put it on my, my Mount Rushmore. See, I'm with you on Goodfellas though. Goodfellas yeah. would be very close to my top four. I mean, yeah. it would be in contention for my Mount Rushmore. Ahead of any of the Godfathers. I like Goodfellas better than the Godfathers. Yes. Yeah. Cause I, I've never seen Godfathers until just this summer watched it and it was good. It was good. 
I don't understand why we make such a big deal about it, but maybe because in the 70s it was so good that we made such a big deal about it. And now we just continue that trend on. It's just well done. I mean, it's everything about it, the way it's shot. Um, it's good. It's the slow. acting, slow. the score. Slow. It's not slow. Slow. So slow. How is it slow? It's slow. Dunaway's just upset nobody's making out. I mean, Sonny made out with a girl no, he did. Uh, up there's, in the bedroom. There's plenty yeah. of making out. Yeah. It's slow. You have to admit it's Now, slow. it wasn't as graphic as Bridgerton. <laughs> yeah. I knew you were going to read that <laughs> no, out. No, I'm just saying. Is that it, the one where the guy bit the girl? It's slow. I mean, here it is wedding we're gonna dance a little bit nothing's gonna happen we're gonna dance we're gonna cut away dance and cut away i'm surprised you didn't ask one of the girls the other night uh kelly or Brittany, if they ever hooked up at a wedding um would have been a good question for you right it would have been it would have been if you had to guess the answers yes oh, or no whoa. Mm. uh mm. Man, i've been to a million weddings i don't think i have what is hooked up kiss somebody maybe before or after not during not sunny corleone <laughs> uh, Sonny was cut a little different there, LT. Uh, he was. Uh, TJ says he just finished the interview with Ashley Smith. It is it is uh, all caps must see. Hope the next one with her is longer. That was Lance's. Oh, is it going to be a part two? Last call. I mean, I think there was some stuff left untold, right? Yeah, yeah, there were. I mean, she, after we got done, and we had way too many martinis for a Friday afternoon. But she told me that she's the one that created Heisman House, which yeah. is such a great concept. Really. I agree. It's, it is. I mean, it's so simple. You're like, how did nobody think of that before? But it is a great concept. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's really, really talented. I mean, well-spoken, very, very entertaining. I didn't do anything. I just threw her questions of things I knew she did, and she ran with it. So, so. of all the people I've dated and didn't marry, is, is she your, your favorite? Um, I don't know who else you dated. <laughs> I mean, the Rebel Fox, just because of her name. I love Maggie. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I, did, I married Maggie. She obviously was the, the, the top choice. No, Ashley would have left you early. <laughs> she left me that night. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Uh, we didn't have Ubers back then. Uh, she said, get the hell out. Time to leave. Brooke says, Lance, have you ever seen Dead Presidents? I have. Um, yeah. So, you know, the funny thing about Dead Presidents, the Sean Penn, no, the Hughes brothers that actually directed that. Is he not in it? Uh, Sean Ben is not in it. I'm, I'm trying to think who's in it. Chris Tucker's in it. Um, they rob a bank wearing president's masks. Uh, no. Nope. David Keith is in it. I'll tell you, the ones, seriously, the, they don't like rob a bank with Nixon. And that is a break, a point break. Yeah, point okay. break. No, they do rob banks, but it's more. Put on the ghoul face, I think, with uh, – no, not the ghoul face. That's the town. They do paint themselves up somehow Okay, when they rob the banks. But the best scene is when they're going back and forth to the war scenes, somebody actually steps on a grenade and it shows them it entirely yeah. explode. Yes. Have you seen it? Yes, yeah. that is – that is. Uh, so they're former uh, soldiers together that are back in the States doing doing harm? Yeah, well, no, they're just it, – it, it shows you, you know, a lot of military guys aren't given a lot of opportunities when they get home. We need to do a better job with that. Yeah, oh, no, I agree. Yeah, and absolutely. And especially after Vietnam, there were so many, it was, it was so divisive. Yeah, right? they were Those, almost considered the enemy. Yeah, they were. Yeah. It's really sad. Yep. I don't know if you remember this. We did an interview with Chris Tucker. You and I did it in the old prod room of jocks. And I talked to him a lot about dead presidents and a bunch of other stuff. And after the interview, he said, man, this is one of the best interviews I've ever had. I don't wow. know if you remember that. You don't, but. No, yeah, I do. No, you don't. <laughs> Uh, did I say anything in the interview? Not really. Yeah. <laughs> you were in there for moral support. Um, bro, uh, Henry says The Departed. Henry, The Departed. I was going to show the kids the other night. It was The Departed or Goodfellas. I let the roommate choose. We went Goodfellas. Um, the Departed is so good. The only thing that gets me about The Departed is the close to final scene where it gets so over the top it, it becomes tarantino and scorsese's not like that you know what i'm yeah, talking about i yeah, know i'm with you yeah. yeah it just became i was like holy shit when i was i went and saw that by myself a matinee right when it came out it might have been a premiere by the way yeah and it just it happened so fast and so many people went down i, I just couldn't believe it have you seen the departed it is a great movie. It's based on a true story. It's based describe on Whitey you, Bulger. Yeah, describe what you think it is, The Departed. The Departed would be um, small western town, 1800. <laughs> no, you're already off. Yeah. Um, he even told you Whitey Bulger. You know he wasn't a cowboy. Oh, Whitey Bulger. I missed yeah. that part. Yep. So it would have been gangster boardwalk, uh, New Jersey. Uh, Boston. Boston. But you're close. Gangster, yes. 
Uh, Chad says, thought for sure Jim's favorite movie would be Crimson Tide or Junction Boys. No, no, no. I, I do I, like Crimson Tide. The uh, submarine movie? Yeah, I like submarine movies. You, you, know, uh, you know what you'd find interesting about that? that? Is in Crimson Tide, they had to bring uh, Quentin Tarantino in. They bring a lot of writers in to right. uh, to color up the uh, the scripts. Yeah. And they thought the script was a little too plain. It was a Tony Scott, Don Phillips. I guess Don Phillips had already passed that at that, or Don Simpson had passed. Um, but they uh, they brought him in to uh, help with the script. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. It doesn't have any marks for him on there. I mean, it just doesn't seem like anything he would have he would have done. You know what I'm saying? Ghostwriter. Yeah. It's just I'm just saying it's like his influence doesn't show up there. Is the, what I'm the influence. I don't remember. I don't know if you remember this. I've only seen it one time. But when there's an argument in the sub over Silver Surfer and some other comic book, yeah, they end up in a fist fight. Yeah, that was the, the part he wrote. Oh, okay, oh, yep. okay, interesting. Uh, it is Bud Light Game Night. We are at Beef O'Brady Stadium Trace, just off I-459, 150, right here in Hoover. You can come by and see us. We're here till seven, live till six. Uh, a little past six, since we had some audio issues. We're going to give you some extra time here. Uh, on our video platform, if you're watching us on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure you've subscribed and are, uh, have set alerts. And if you're watching us on Twitter, fire off a retweet. Like us there. If you're watching us on Facebook, share us. Give us a thumbs up there. And uh, also on Twitch, LT, tickets tonight. we got tickets. Yeah, look, we've got a great swag pack. It's got a ton of Bud Light stuff in it, including a Bud Light like uh, stadium folding out chair. And then you get two tickets to homecoming this weekend in Tuscaloosa, Mississippi State, Alabama. All you got to do is come by and scan the barcode or war code, as we call it. No war code. And uh, we'll transfer the tickets to you. It's that simple. Come enjoy a two ninety nine Bud Light pint with us. Uh, some of these Bud Light buckets. You can do the Stella. You can do the Bud Light. Um, but we're going to be here until 7 o'clock, so we'll uh, be on for like 15 more minutes. Then we'll hang out with you. But come see us. Good way to kick off the weekend. Some great football on the night. Uh, let's see. Lunsford says, back to the kickball, I'm the only college athlete on staff, but thanks. Uh, wow. Te technically, Lunsford, I played one year of college golf. Uh, I was on the baseball team at Montevallo. Yeah, so yeah, I, I got mean, cut. Yeah, get off your high horse there, Lunsford. Uh, Jacob says, I'm the only member of a sports hall of fame. Wow. Jacob says, better actor, Leonardo DiCaprio or Tom Hanks? I would go Leo, but both are great. I would go Leo as well. I don't know how it separates the two, but I think it's Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, Leo or who? Tom Hanks. I've said this before, and this isn't fair, but I think a lot of people could have played Forrest Gump. Yeah, but I don't even know that that's his best role. No. Maybe his most popular movie, but it's not his best role. I mean, he was I mean, really good it's... in Big. Oh, he was great in Big. You think his best role is Castaway, though, I right? I do, yeah. and I know you think his best role is Captain Phillips. Yeah, at the end of Captain Phillips, he's phenomenal. I mean, I don't know that start to finish it's his best role, but I've always said the last five, ten minutes – is the best acting he's ever done. Okay, just look at the variety right there. You just named it his roles. Uh, I, how about this? Well, but I mean, look at DiCaprio. We've seen him on the screen one time together. Catch me if you can. Yep. And I thought Leo outshined. I know he was the I bigger don't know. character. That, that, that's interesting, though, because I thought Hank's character was really good in that. Um, You're fudging checks. Yeah, I, th I thought it would, but, but I thought Leo had the better accent. Probably so, but there again, Leo was the lead actor in it. Yeah, well, Tom shouldn't have been as lazy. He should have learned his Boston <laughs> dialect better. I'll tell you who I liked, and that was Christopher Walken. Oh, Christopher Walken's fantastic. He's a good actor, isn't he? He's uh, uh, Leo's dad. Yeah. Has he won a Academy Award, yes or no? Uh, no? I would say no. He has. Best Supporting Actor, The Deer Hunter, which is a very uplifting oh, movie. Yeah, that's a, that's a laugher right uh, there. That's an old military movie, right? <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's not a hunting club. Well, I'm just saying, somebody said the other day, I think it was on the show, that it was the first movie what was it first war movie that showed grotesque violence or something well no. what we were talking about is, not not the deer hunter but some movie they were talking that about was saving, I went back. Private, saving private ryan that was on the mystery fifth hour a lot of people credit the opening scene of saving private ryan or the, not really the opening scene but the omaha beach scene of changing the way war movies are done because it showed the gore but as you guys pointed out deer hunter um uh, full metal jacket full metal jacket they had a lot of gore in it right yeah, I thought those were the first ones that showed some of what Vietnam was really like. Yeah. Um, Henry says DiCaprio acts like he's getting eaten by a bear. Hanks talks to soccer balls. Got to go DiCaprio. So if Hanks best role is Castaway or Captain Phillips, what is DiCaprio's best role? Uh, Wolf of Wall Street. He was very good in that. Yeah. 
I mean, he was really, really good. Obviously, in the Revenant, he won an Academy Award. Yeah. Um, I, I thought in The Aviator, he was really good. It, See, it, that, that, it, that's it, one it, of those movies I don't like, but his yeah, acting is incredible. I, I agree. As Howard yeah. Hughes, it, it, it played out. It was too long. Um, I got a little bored with it, but he was great in that. I don't know if I love the movie Inception. And I think he was fantastic in it, but I don't know if that's just because I love the movie so much. He was good in The Departed, though. I mean, yeah. the, the emotional range. Shutter Island. Uh, yeah. What's that movie? I uh, find myself, it's on all the time, but I never, I should like it, but I don't like it. It's uh, in like, um, in, uh, what's up? Uh, what's he in New York? Grape. He's, he's good in that. What? Oh, no, you're talking about Gangs of New York. Gangs of New York. With him. He and, was good in that. Uh, good yeah, in that I, didn't, I didn't like that. Daniel movie. Day Lewis. Daniel yeah. Day Lewis. I should like that more than I do. Well, that's what we I always talk about. Yeah. With that cast and kind of that subject matter, you would think I would love that movie. I was there day one for that. Yeah, and I didn't love uh, it. I didn't love it. I gave it a C plus. Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz, yep. She was miscast. Yeah, I agree completely with you. Like yeah, I just, uh, I was on the couch a little bit ago, and this movie called on came on. You've probably seen it called The Other Woman, and oh, with um, Jamie the- Lannister from Game of Thrones, and it's Cameron Diaz, it's Leslie Mann, and Kate Upton. Yeah, I've seen that. Absolutely. And I watched like the first ten minutes, and I was like, "This is some of the dumbest shit I've ever seen." Love that movie. <laughs> Loved it, <laughs> but that's because the movie Kate, that Cameron Diaz needs to be in. Yeah, because I agree. Kate Man's the wife, Leslie Man. Leslie yeah. Man's the wife, and she's being cheated on with her husband cheating on with Cameron Diaz. So she goes and confronts her, and then they find out there's another one. Right, that's Kate Upton. Dude keeps cheating younger and younger each time. Well, this so guy, now they this team. Guy, so now by they. The way, this guy's doing okay for yeah, himself. Yeah, he did really so, well. Yeah, I so. mean, Leslie Man was the uh, Leslie Man was the one that was beaten with the ugly stick. Yeah, <laughs> and, she, and, and she's sneaky hot. Yeah, and then they would. Uh, then they. Uh, then they find out he's taking even a younger girl to the islands, and they chase him down down there. Yeah. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, Brooks says Hanks had a really good 10-year run, but he's had some duds, too. I mean, Leo's had some duds. Let's don't uh, act like they have Let's think about it. I mean, has he had to have had some duds? Nobody has a whole career without duds. Well, I, I agree. I mean, look at De Niro. It's nothing but duds now. And yeah. But, but yeah. Hanks really is hitting his duds here at the end. And well, Leo's not necessarily. Years away. A lot of people said um, Lady Killers was a dud for him. No, some people love that. It's Coen yeah. Brothers film. I still have never seen it. I haven't either, but I know a lot of people say that was his worst, like because that happened right in that ten year run. Yeah, but I've heard it's really good from some people. Yeah, didn't I'm, he do a mob movie? Um, oh gosh, that's a fantastic oh, movie. Road to Perdition. Road to Perdition. Perdition yeah. One of his best. That yeah. might be my favorite Tom H- H- uh, Hanks film. Oh, he is so glad, good in that. Glad I brought it up. Tom Hanks and Paul Newman. Paul Newman plays a really good role. And Daniel Craig. Yeah, that's right. Daniel Craig in it. Yeah, glad I brought Road Perdition up. We'd have left the Tom Hanks conversation. Jude Law, that. bad fingernails in it. Yep. Um, MJ says Clooney is a billionaire. It's ego. He just wants to be on the camera. That's going back to the movie you said is a total cash grab. MJ, I'm with you there. I'm okay. Yep. I'll tell you, man, Clooney, though, the first thing I noticed about him, I think the first movie I saw him in when he came out of ER was from Dust Till Dawn, was a Robert Rodriguez film. Quentin Tarantino was in it. He helped write the script. And you could just tell Clooney was a movie star, though. Yeah. Like, he's just really comfortable. Like, his best work, Michael Clayton, he's great. Um, He's really good in Syriana. I'll tell you a Clooney movie that I think um, he doesn't play. Well, I think he plays a pretty deep character. Is up in the air. Yeah. That's a really good Clooney movie. Yeah, very good. I like that. Boy, I feel so sorry for him at the end of that movie. Yeah, I do, too. He's lonely. He found love. You know, I never wanted to get married. And if I had not, you know, with Maggie... I would have never gotten married. Right. You know, who could live with this, right? Um, and I think now at this point in my life, how sad I would be without kids, without a your girlfriend or a steady wife or something, yeah. how lonely I would be. It seemed really good back in my 20s and 30s. But now as you get older, like he was getting at the end of that movie, to have nothing to work for, nothing to go home to, it's all fun when you're single and in you know, seeing people naked. But when you, get old, you, you know, yeah. the moral of that story, don't knock on the door until you text them first. Right, buddy, how sad is that scene, though? Yeah, yeah, it's bad. It I mean, that's the worst part of that movie yeah. is when he knocks on the door. Because yeah. he's ready to give it all in Absolutely. and be with her the rest yep. of her life. Yep. And yep. she was just down for the weekend. Yeah, complete opposite of that movie was, again, the five minutes I watched of uh, The Other Woman, Cameron Diaz shows up at dude's wife's house wearing a plumber's outfit with, like, like really <laughs> tight. It would. Like, if you can have a sexy plumber outfit, that's what that she was, was wearing. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Lance Samuel asks, who is getting the axe in the next House of Dragon episode? Can you do that without spoilers, you think? Or do you want to skip that one? Oh, boy, I thought a lot of people were getting at this past episode. Um, I'm going to say it's the foot fetish guy. No, he's going to be around a while. Uh, let me think about that. Haven't seen one episode. Yeah. Uh, Brett from New Mexico says, It's a Wonderful Life is a great movie. You know, that's a movie, Brett, that uh, honestly I have seen. It's on every Christmas. We watch it every Christmas. I've never seen it start to finish, though, I don't think. It's one of those where I'll just dive in and watch a little bit and then lose interest. Here's what we do. We 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 own it, but we'll watch it. I think it's on NBC 13. It is. NBC shows it every every. Christmas or is it Christmas around? Eve. It's Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. Okay. Yep. So we have come back from our service, Christmas right. Eve service. Yep. And we end up putting, uh, you know, helping Santa right, or, right. Uh, or wrapping our own presents and yep. things like that with that in the background. And then we'll replay it again and replay it again just nonstop. It's it's on in the background all of Christmas Eve yep. for us. So you, I, I think you it's, like It's a Wonderful Life. I thought it was good. I mean, it's got a great message and, yeah. you know, appreciate what you've got is basically the message. Don't take anything for granted. The funny thing is it was really panned by critics. They hated it when it first came out. And now it's considered a classic. Now it's considered yeah. a classic. Thank you, Brett. But it's also really good with um, the fact it's okay to sacrifice for someone you love, too. I mean, he sacrificed for his, his brother to go off to college. He stayed there at the old loan company and... He gave he, he gave a lot of himself to other people, and that came back to him in the end. Well, and it almost got really sad at the end, but it works out. Uh, Leo went from Wolf of Wall Street to Revenant. That's range. Let me tell you, though. That is a great point, Samuel. Uh, that is range, but I'm going to say this. The best acting in Wolf of Wall Street is Margot Robbie. She's Australian and sounds like she is from South Jersey and has yeah. lived there her whole life. I've, I've got to say, though, I, I don't disagree. She was really good. I never – pegged her until i saw the um um the skater tanya harding tanya yeah yeah i, she was I, really tanya, good in that I tanya yeah she was so good in that but um jonah hill oh he that's true he steals the show that's Wolf true no there's a lot of good acting in Wolf <laughs> Wall Street. Now, jonah hill is funny the scene i'm where, not leaving the scene where he's on the quaalude <laughs> <laughs> They're at that party and he's on the Quaaludes. It's That's so a great funny. movie. I'm going to watch it tonight. <laughs> I mean, it is I can't filthy. You know what sucks is I can't show the kids. No, like, you I know cannot. they would love it. No, but it is I can't, filthy. Yeah, I can't show them. Did Forrester filthy. go home? A Forrester's right behind you. Hey, Forrester. <laughs> I, I just thought of Forrester. I'm going to go home tonight and Maggie's going to be in sleep. I'm going to watch Wolf of Wall Street. He's, he's riding solo tonight and he's out here with us. Long movie. It is a long movie, but it is it is worth it. I mean, you got to get past the fact that it is completely filthy. It is the dirtiest movie, not dirty no, like, it's, not dirty it, like pornographic. It's got but, the most f bombs in yeah. the the history of cinema. Yeah, I mean, it is filthy, but it is so funny and so well acted. We by everyone in it for for our small crowd that's here right now. <laughs> we, we don't say this enough, but how awesome are the ten people we work with? Look at Jimmy, Jimmy two beers. He's going to get all. Uh... No, I'm serious. No, I, I mean, mean we, when, you, we... when you start thinking about it, I yeah. mean, here's Forrester who That's could right. be doing anything right here. He's just hanging out with us. Taylor, who just graduated Auburn, who's at every event yeah. and, and just everybody on this whole staff. It's pretty amazing. I look around every now and then. I'm just yeah. like, dang, this is pretty awesome. Yeah, it is. We got a good group, man. Good group of people. I love them. We're I, mean, at I, don't, I don't know who number 11 will be, but. The ten, right. the 10 we got through. Really I mean, good. I, I a think, lot of pressure on number 11. That's right. I think our house mom would be considered uh, the roommate, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. She's a big part of this, too. Yeah, she brings lunch and she yep. decorates for uh, Christmas. Yeah. Yep. So oh. she's a big part of this, too. Yeah. I mean, all the wives and girlfriends have been that, too. No, I'm good. Thank the you. Wags. The wax. The wax. I never, I never liked that for some Wives reason. and girlfriends. You know why? It first started time I ever, in soccer, right? British soccer. Yeah, and the first yeah. time I ever saw that was in Hustler as a, a young Jeez, kid. Jim. And I was like, <laughs> oh I was like, what does that mean? And then I learned what it meant later on. Yeah. I was like, yeah. A lot, a lot of people are saying uh, War Dogs with, is great oh. with Jonah Hill. Have you never seen it? I've never seen War Dogs. Go home and watch it. Tonight. Yeah, I've heard it's good. Yeah, it, it's a true story, and it's based on, you know, arms dealers. And, yeah. and Jonah Hill, his character, you know, found a glitch in the system of how you could kind of um, – your bid could win with the government. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, it's oh man, and him and Miles to, Teller. It's so good. Then you have to go deliver it to the the bad guys. Yeah, well, they only had to make a couple of deliveries. Yeah, um, but, but they were very, very tense. Very good. 
And Todd Phillips does that, who did Wedding Crashers and I love Joker. Wedding Crashers. And, yeah. Steve, um, Stevie Nick says, how about Matthew McConaughey and Interstellar? I've never seen Interstellar. McConaughey made a turn, though. I mean, people kind of thought he was just the rom-com. Really, his turn was in uh, True Detective, right? Yeah, well, so that was when the same year. From- and it was funny because he won Golden Globe for Best Actor for True Detective. Yep. And he also won for Dallas Buyers Club, oh, an Academy Award. He was what a good year. That, what a good yeah. year. Yeah, he had a good year that well, year. Well, he looked, I mean, he changed his look for both of those. Uh, Cornbread says, any plans for a Floribama trip? Um, yes. We're talking yes. about Army Navy, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing that. In fact, our buddy. Uh, you know what we haven't done yet? What's that? Just liners. I know. Steve. I think about that every day. Our buddy Steve. Well, if only you would bring it up one time when we got those microphones in front of us. It'd be fantastic. Our buddy Steve reached out to me yesterday about some technical stuff down there, so he's already getting ready for us. So uh, I'm excited about that. All right, I'm seeing if there's anything uh, important we've missed here because we've, we've we've I'll given, go all night, Brown. I'll go to seven. If we've given to. the time we uh, agreed to give. Well, I'm gonna have to go pee in a minute. Yeah, so. me too. Um, I need to sneeze too. Yep. No, you can do that. Go ahead, man. Well. You can take my sleep. Oh, Brooks says for Clooney, oh, brother, where art thou? I never liked that movie. I didn't either. I'm not a big Coen Brothers guy, though. I like the Coen Brothers, but some of them are hit or miss for me. I mean, I yeah. thought Fargo and No Country for Old Men are two of my favorites. Bit, yeah. Bits and pieces of that I enjoyed, though. You know, the funny thing about that is Clooney wanted to sing himself, yeah. and the Coen Brothers wouldn't let him. Oh, really? Yeah. But that's the worst part of the movie to me is when they're singing, you can tell it's not him singing. Right. Um, Samuel says, ask Jimmy two beers, how much Saban has impacted his life. Oh, I have actually told this to Nick Saban before last time I was on. Hey coach. Yeah. I, uh, in one of the commercial breaks, I said, Hey, I, I don't know if any media person has ever said to you, thank you, but I want to say thank you. And he looked at me, he was signing autographs. He stopped me. He looked at what do you mean? And I said, you don't understand. I was making this much money. And then when you started at Alabama, I started making this much money. And then I started making this much, this much money, and now we own our own company, and I make this much money. You have literally paid for a house, sent in, basically are putting two of my kids through school, and none of this would have happened if Alabama wasn't having the success it was having. So thank you. And he said, nobody's ever said that to me, and I've never thought of that. And he didn't say you're welcome, but he gave me a, a, an answer that I was like, you know, he sort of appreciated me saying thank you. But in reality – if Alabama, I mean, I cannot tell you how many people know our names around the country just because of us going to the playoffs and being around national people all the time. It's helped our show tremendously. So I literally have told him thank you before. Yeah, and I think he's helped, obviously, a lot of businesses. I mean, well, he's what he's done for the economy. economy. Yeah. What he's done for the university. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's helped the whole state's economy. I don't. I mean, people can laugh at that if they want, but it's true. Yeah, well, I'm and just speaking in the Dunaway household, for, and yep. you guys may not feel that way, but um, his popularity and just the little bit that I've been able to be associated with Alabama along the way, it's it has changed my life. I'm just a poor boy from a, the mud puddle in Alabaster. Just a poor boy. Yeah. <laughs> He's just a poor boy. Yeah. From a poor family. <laughs> hey, um, that's going to do it for us here at Beef O'Brady's. But LT, they could still come out and register for those tickets, right? Yeah, please do. Christine's out here. We're, uh, we, we've are we got the war code, the barcode. <laughs> All you got to do is come swipe your phone. You're going to win a prize pack from Bud Light, including two tickets to the game this Saturday in Tuscaloosa, Mississippi State, Alabama. It's homecoming. Uh, we will actually send those tickets to your phone. All you got to do is come by, register. It's as simple as that. We'll draw somebody tonight. You can enjoy two ninety nine Bud Lights. Get the weekend going. We've got college football, the NFL, Major League Baseball playoffs. We're Beefo Brady's at the Grove. Come see us tonight. What are you doing? I'm here? looking at a graphic. It says, "Don't drop too straight often." Uh, it says Nick Saban's nineteen and six after a loss. They lost. Be. No, that they've lost right. six games after a loss. I don't no. think Saban's ever lost back to back since uh, two thousand seven. Has he? Two thousand and seven was the last time he lost back to back regular seasons. The last time he lost back to back was two thousand thirteen Iron Bowl Oklahoma. Right. Yeah. So there's no. Well, yeah. now I tell you that record. No. That, so what about um, Florida in two thousand eight? Then they lost to Utah. Yeah, so but that's Lance, another time. That's another time. Yeah. That's, yeah. So 2007, you had some. So how many times they lose in? Does that get you to six if you count the 
number of straight losses well, they had in. But see, the problem in 2007 is they dropped two or three in a row, right? They right. dropped Mississippi State, La Monroe, and the Iron Bowl. So that would be two losses no. a couple of times. Yeah, they, they lost four straight that year. LSU, State, La Monroe, Iron Bowl. Is yep. that right? Yeah. Yep. So that would have been three, and then uh-huh. we just named the other three. Okay. So that's the six. So yeah. after it's a loss, a bit, it's a bit of a misleading yeah. stat, though. Yeah. So after a loss, half he's of those, nineteen and six. Yeah, half of those were stacked up right there. Well, yeah. twenty and six after Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> LT says take the tide. Yep. Hey, uh, thank you for watching us. Give us a thumbs up on face or, uh, on Facebook and share us there as well. But also on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Set alerts so you know when we're live for shows just like this. Outside our normal nine to one. Retweet this, like us there, and on Twitch as well. And be with us tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, for the Friday edition of the next round. We are at Beefo Brady's 150-459 Stadium Trace and Hoover. And we'll be here actually in the Grove, near Stadium Trace and Hoover, in the Grove. And uh, we'll be here for just a little while longer until 7 o'clock. So come see us, register for these Bama tickets. We'll see you tomorrow it, morning. It'd be good to know what our location is. I need to start remembering that next week's location. You know off the top of your head, LT? I've got it saved right here. Hold on. Yeah, all right. As Dunaway looks that up, come I, right. I'm going to guess 10 roof. Come, I think I think, yeah, I think, think that might be right. Um, come register for the tickets. We're here till 7 o'clock. Watch us tomorrow morning, 9 to 1. On the next round. Next week. Next week, you will see with, us with Bud the, Light Game Night. With the Ravens and the Buccaneers Ravens is the Thursday night game. Buccaneers is the Thursday night game. We are at a place known as Inta Ufra. Tin Roof. Tin Roof. <laughs> so Tin Roof Lakeview. How much, how much is in that Bud Light? <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock.